the cabinets are crooked. It's not my fault. Actually, the oven is slightly crooked too, and when you put things on the stove, they kind of sort of slowly tilt towards the back. Hi, I'm Frank. I'm a professional chef, and in this box are all the ingredients for a $101 omelet. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a home cook, and in this box are my $8 omelet ingredients. See what we got. I feel like a kid on Christmas. I think I can do something with this. I feel like I have to live up to these ingredients. <laughs> so I guess what Frank magically tossed over to me is a recipe book. For the omelet that I was going to make, I had some nicer ingredients to work with. I had organic pasture-raised eggs. Gentle care, all vegetarian diet, no hormones, no antibiotics. That's the kind of egg they don't even sell at my grocery store. <laughs> Butter. That's worth a lactate pill if I ever saw something. <laughs> With smoked salmon. Ooh. And then creme fraiche. Okay. I had some dill, two types of sea salt. Two kinds of salt? Okay. Captain Fancy. And some salmon roe for the top. Ooh. I had some asparagus for steaming on the side. I love asparagus. In an omelet though? and everything that I needed to make a really nice sherry, sherry vinaigrette. vinaigrette. Sherry vinegar, private reserve, shallot, ooh, sorry shallots, lemon juice, vegetable oils, Dijon mustard, ooh, Dijon. For Emily's ingredients, I have some simpler things, things that you're more likely to find in your home kitchen. I was planning on doing more of a traditional diner style omelet. So I have some garlic, some butter, some kosher salt, bacon, eggs, Swiss cheese. I like. Swiss cheese. Well, Swiss cheese is cheap more than anything else. <laughs> and some white button mushrooms. These ingredients might be simple, but I think I can use my chef's superpowers to make them into something delicious. Oh God, Frank's gonna make my omelet so fancy. If I had a guess, this would probably cost around seven to eight dollars. Whoa, seven to eight dollars on the money. <laughs> 70, 70 dollars? Whoa. Wait, so Frank just has all of this at his house? So this is my kitchen in the real world. Uh, this is where we're cooking now. <laughs> no more studios. I bet Frank's got a pretty nice kitchen, doesn't he? I might be a professional chef, but for the most part, I'm just a normal person. Okay, here are my number one concerns. One, French omelet is a very specific technique that I have not attempted before. This omelet is going to be a trifold French omelet, and that's not supposed to have any color at all. So this is a very kind of technique-driven omelet that when I was in culinary school, we got graded on how good we did these. Amounts I am concerned about because there are no amounts for anything on here. The biggest topping concern is the creme fraiche quenelle. And a quenelle is basically just a, a small football-shaped garnish, which we're gonna make with the whipped creme fraiche. You get two spoons, you go back and forth, to make this little football shape. Steamed asparagus, I don't have a steamer, so we'll see. And sherry vinaigrette, I think I can do. So, so far we've got sherry vinaigrette down. <laughs> An important thing for Emily to remember is to emulsify her vinaigrette. Oil and vinegar don't normally go together. These are two things that don't normally combine naturally that we have to kind of force to combine. So I've just been informed that the sherry vinaigrette involves some sort of emulsification. Which means uh, that, in fact, I don't know what I'm doing at all for anything. So this is when I get to call Rose, right? Rose? Emily! Hi! <laughs> so nice to meet you. So what do you have going on? So, Rose. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing a French omelette. The one thing you want to remember about a French omelette, Emily, is no browning at all on the eggs. It's gotta be really nice and light in color, but coagulated so that you have this really nice envelope of solid egg and kind of a pillowy, softer curd inside. Mix your eggs in so that they're starting to form curds and you want it to be at least um, like three quarters of the way cooked and then press it a little bit with your spatula so that you get a nice egg envelope really is what a French omelet's all about. And then you're gonna roll it. That's really, I think that's the hardest part, but you're gonna do great. All right, fingers crossed. <laughs> you're gonna get it. You know what you're doing. Yeah. 
Thanks, Rose. You know what you're doing. <laughs> the next thing is I'm doing steamed asparagus. Here's the mm. thing. I don't have a steamer. Um, oh. Any ideas? Yeah, you do you have a, you have a fry, <laughs> frying pan will work. Um, just between us, you can um, boil it a tiny little bit, just a shorter time. It'll get nice and bright green and it'll be nice and tender that way. Okay, well, thanks, Emily. Good luck. Thanks, I think Rose. it's going to be fantastic. Talking to Rose was a big help. Before, there were a lot of known unknowns, but also unknown unknowns. And now that I know that I don't know, I'm concerned that there are a lot of unknowns, but at least I known them. So first thing I'm going to do is get my bacon in the oven. And I have some ideas on how to make this a little next level. I have a sheet tray with parchment. What I'm going to do with this is just lay it out onto my tray with parchment. Okay, get it into the oven. So I'm going to let that bacon cook for a few minutes uh, and start to get a little brown. All right, so first things first, I'm going to rinse off this asparagus. In case anyone's wondering, this is a countertop dishwasher. It came with the apartment we just moved. Kind of fancy. I'm just chopping off the ends, the thickest, woodiest parts of my asparagus. And now I'm just gonna give a little peel to the ends of these to make sure that I don't get any of the stringy fibriness in there. Peeling my asparagus, a normal thing I do at home. They're probably gonna cut this down, but just so you know, I've spent like eight years of my life peeling asparagus. <laughs> All right, so my asparagus is finally done. I am going to put it in the pan just for now, but in the meantime, I'm going to make my vinaigrette. And I'm gonna make a uh, coffee syrup for this. And I'm gonna make this into a glaze for the, uh, for the bacon, right? I have some leftover coffee. That's about two cups of coffee. I have some brown sugar. So about a cup of brown sugar. And I'm gonna put this on the stove. Okay, let me get this on. And I'm just gonna let that cook down until it's a syrup. Time to make the vinaigrette. So the first thing I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna chop up one of these shallots. <sighs> so I'm temporarily blinded, but other than that, things are going great. All right, I think that's good. That's gonna have to be good enough. So I have my coffee and brown sugar syrup here. It's got a nice kind of deep molasses color. It's starting to get thick. The next thing I'm gonna do to this is I'm gonna add some vinegar, right? This is sweet. It's a little bitter. Our bacon is salty and fatty. And I'm probably gonna add like two or three tablespoons, not a lot. I don't want it to be so sour, uh, but I do want it to have a little bit of that vinegar bite to it. Give it a stir. That's good. This is just stuff I had lying around the house. Something I whipped up to make the bacon just a little more chefy. Chefy, is that the word I wanna use? <laughs> Fancy pants. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add in my lemon juice, my Dijon, and my vinegar. All right, let's whisk. I don't even use a whisk, like, ever. Okay, pray for me. We're going. Okay, I think this is done. It looks like a real, like, emulsified vinaigrette. I'm just gonna salt and pepper it. Okay. That's really good. So I have my glaze, I got a pastry brush, and we're gonna be generous. My bacon right now is probably cooked three quarters of the way. So this glaze is just going to kind of sweeten it a little and give it a little darker color. And I'm not gonna be skimpy with the glaze. I'm gonna put a lot on there so that when it goes into the oven, it'll stick to the bacon and get nice and crunchy and, you know, sticky. Okay, I'll let this cook for a few more minutes and maybe if I need a little more, I'll put some more on, but I'm just gonna put it back into the oven. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get my water boiling for the asparagus. Just need like a cup of water. I'm going to cover it up and turn on the heat. What's next? I can tackle anything. Okay, let's get this omelet party started. So Emily gave me some white button mushrooms for this omelet. You know, these are fairly cheap mushrooms, but if they're treated well, they're absolutely delicious. And my rule of thumb when it comes to mushrooms is if they're cheap, you can wash them. And people say, oh, chef, they get all watered down and waterlogged. Don't worry, we'll take care of that with a little bit of technique. So I just kind of rub these around. And if these were expensive, like Morels or Chanterelles, I would never, ever, ever do this, okay? I'm gonna make sure that when I cook them, I get most of that water taken out. So for my filling for my omelet, I need to whip up my creme fraiche a little bit, like Rose suggested. You can whip the creme fraiche, and that just makes it a little bit lighter. Just a few dollops, not more than like an ounce-ish. Um, I'm gonna use about half the package. I don't 
need that much for inside of my omelet, but I want to make sure I have extra in case I mess up. All right, so I'm just going to whisk this a little bit to give it a little more air, a little more je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I don't think I whisked this much in one day in like a very long time, maybe ever. <laughs> so whiskey business, you know what they say? No whisk, no reward. I sure would like some whiskey after this. How this whiskey in. Okay, I think that looks good. With these mushrooms, I'll take off the end. It's usually dry. And then all I'm gonna do is if they're really big, cut them in half and then slice. You also have to take into account that mushrooms will shrink up a little. So you probably have to do more than you think you need. So I have a little bit of dill here and I'm just gonna give it a chop and then I'll incorporate it into my creme fraiche. Boop, that's good. Yeah, all right, great. I'm putting this in the fridge. I've salted my asparagus water. I'm just gonna put my asparagus in. And then I'm gonna actually get my butter ready for this because what is mushrooms uh, for an omelet without a little bit of butter? All right, so my asparagus is all done cooking. So I am just going to pull it out of here. I'm just going to let my asparagus hang out at room temperature. It's now cooked. Um, and I'm gonna grab my salmon and get ready for my omelet. Okay, so I just have some unsalted butter, and I say this all the time. I always go for unsalted because then I can control the amount of salt I put into this. Uh, again, I am the salt master, so I'm going to uh, put about two and a half, three tablespoons of butter. And then I have some garlic, and I just give this a little bit of a whack with the side of my knife. I always like uh, less processed garlic, so I'm not going to chop it super fine. You know, I'm doing kind of a rustic omelet. I'm just going to give it a nice rough chop right and I put it into my ingredient bowl and that's what we're going to do for our mushrooms. I'm going to be uh, chopping the salmon. If you hear people wooing it's because it's seven o'clock here and people are cheering for the healthcare workers which is super nice. It's really nice that everybody goes out and cheers. These are scary times but we're all in it together you know. So here is my salmon. So I'm at the stove. I have my pan on high heat and I'm gonna cook my mushrooms. So just a swirl of uh, vegetable oil. You can see that it's smoking and I want that, right? And then I'm gonna add my mushrooms right away. Their mushrooms are spread out nice and evenly and they're sizzling. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt just to draw out some of the moisture. I'm gonna hit it with a little black pepper, fresh cracked. I'm gonna add my garlic now and just one nice knob of that butter that I had from earlier. So I want to cook this until my garlic becomes fragrant. And I'm just gonna put this in a bowl. Nice caramelized brown mushrooms and garlic. Let's get our eggs ready. I know that there is a correct way to open eggs, but I can't, I can't do it. So you take the egg, you can just tap them against each other, crack them into the bowl. You never really wanna crack your egg on the side of the bowl because shell is gonna shatter into your mixture. Ooh. And looks like I didn't get any shell in there, which is great. I'm gonna take like a good minute, two minutes, and whisk them well so the yolks and the whites are incorporated. So just whisk it so that's really combined well. Well, this is the third time I'm whisking today, so that's cool. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> Some people would say season the eggs right now. I like to wait until I get them in the pan and they're partially cooked to season them, okay? So there are a lot of different opinions about when you should season your eggs. I am going to do it right before I put uh, them into the pan. Just put a little salt into here. And, and then I'll just give that a quick mix. Cool. So Emily sent me deli Swiss cheese. What I'm gonna do is just take probably like three slices out of this and I'll just cut this kind of into matchsticks just so that it fits into the omelet a little better and put this aside. Let me see. Good, it's not Gruyere, but it's still good. All right, so my eggs whisked, my salmon chopped, uh, butter ready to go, creme fraiche is in the fridge, which means I'm ready to try to make an omelet. Emily had planned on us making more of an American diner style omelet. I'm gonna do a French trifold omelet. The technique is a little more difficult than that American diner style omelet, but it tastes better, it looks better. So that's what we're gonna go for today. Okay, like Rose said, if it's not brown, it's technically a French omelet. All right, let's do this. 
and I'm going butter into the pan and say a little burn. So once the butter is melted, we'll add our eggs. And this is where the technique kind of starts. Emily, if you're stressing out about this, don't worry, you're gonna be okay. And we go. Eggs. I don't really want any sizzling at this point. I just really want the eggs to start to cook. I'm gonna season it up right now. And once that I see my eggs start to cook, I'm gonna start kind of scrambling them into nice, large curds. Just mixing my eggs, putting love into my eggs. And once this starts to set up, I'm gonna just flatten it out, lower my heat. I'm gonna take it off, put my filling in. Add my cheese, add some mushrooms, spread those out evenly down the center. All right, and I'm just going to dot it with some smoked salmon. And now I'm gonna start the roll, okay? I'm gonna take my omelet and roll it about one third. Confidence. Nope, nope, nope. Push it towards the end of your pan, let that lip slide out, and then just fold it over the top. My almost not at all perfect omelet. Yeah, it's so wet. Sorry, guys. Ah, oh, boy. A beautiful trifold omelet. No color, no striations. The center is still soft and creamy. Everything's hot in the middle. Okay, right. it's not perfect, but it's not horrible. It's definitely not brown. It's a little bit damp. I mean, it. I need it. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna put a little lipstick on this beautiful bulldog. And we're gonna take this over to the table and plate it up. All right, so I'm just gonna grab some asparagus. <laughs> I'm just gonna use my hands. It's my asparagus, I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna give the vinaigrette just a little refreshing whisk. My new thing is not ketchup, it's whisking. I'm going to put a little bit of this on my asparagus, just to dress it, such that it is coated in delicious shallot cherry vinaigrette. I'm gonna keep it really simple. I have my omelet that's beautiful. Just take a little butter and rub it on top so it's nice and shiny. And then I'm just gonna take my coffee and cider vinegar glazed uh, bacon and put it on the side. So I'm just keeping it simple. Okay, it's quenelle time. I actually don't even, I don't know that I know the process for what this is supposed to look like. Rose said it would look like a little football shape. Is it a football shape? No. Is it a dollop of creme fraiche on top of an omelet? Absolutely. I'm gonna leave it. I think that's close enough. Oh, wow. Salmon row. That's so cool. All right, so I'm gonna put just a little bit of this. That's not a little bit, but you know what? We're going decadent. This is a $101 omelet, so we might as well get lots of roe on there. Next up, I've got my dill, hand-torn sprigs of dill on here. Last thing is some sea salt. Dang. This was really hard. <laughs> I'm excited to hear what Frank thinks. I hope that I did justice to Emily's recipe. She's got such a great attitude and seems to love cooking. I'm sure she's gonna do great. And this is the best I could do at a French omelet. <laughs> Selfie with an omelet. <laughs> I think my omelet turned out spectacular. I think the bacon looks absolutely delicious and I can't wait to dig in. Oh, really good. It tastes like money. <laughs> it's like salty, it's creamy. Oh, the asparagus is really good. Whoever wrote this recipe, kudos to them. <laughs> so we cut into it and you can still see that it's fairly juicy in the middle. It's not dry. Of course, because I'm the master of salt, it's seasoned beautifully. Mushrooms have a little garlic bite, but it's not overpowering. I taste the omelet. I never thought I was that much of a glazed bacon fan, but this is spectacular. All in all, I think I did a good job. Yeah, I would definitely eat this a million times. Good job, Emily. In this time when we're all kind of stuck at home, I feel like food is kind of love and, and when you cook for people, you're showing how much you care for them. My wife, the camera lady. <laughs> hey Frank. Hi Emily. Hi, how you Good. doing? <laughs> well, you get to make an omelet today. How'd it go? Oh, it went, well, it took like eight hours, but it went really well. <laughs>
great. It, it was so delicious. I'm I'm so thank you for choosing these ingredients because because now you have them in lockdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the omelet that uh, you gave me came out great too. It was simple. It wasn't complicated, and I've had a lot of practice with omelets, so I do this all the time. It's really not super easy, you know, uh, and I apologize. <laughs> so uh, it, it's kind of like one of those things that in culinary school, they kind of ingrain in your head to do right, you know? Uh, can I see yours? Can you show me? Yeah, okay, listen, uh, it, it turned out okay. <laughs> oh, that looks great, look at that. No color at all, that's beautiful. Yeah. No, really, really nice. Like, there's no color on at all. That's a beautiful color for a, a French omelet. Asparagus looks good. Was it tasty, the asparagus? It tasted fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna show you my omelet now, and I'll tell you what I did, right? It is not complicated, it is not fancy, uh, but it's got lots of mushrooms. It's got some Swiss cheese, and the bacon has like kind of like this crispy um, like coating on it, uh, and it, it turned out really, really nice. So uh, I think that uh, you did a great job. Oh, and I'm just sad that I can't be there to taste it. You know what I'm saying? Like, better to be safe. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Bye, Frank. Thanks so much. Okay, you too. Always a pleasure.